Welcome to the Mental Health and Faith, A Closer Look podcast. This is Carolyn Cooper with In God's Corner Ministry. My prayer is that God will use this podcast to bring you encouragement for life in a complicated world, especially in topics related to mental health, our recovery journey, and living as a Christian with a mental illness. May God bless your time listening today, and may he bring you encouragement. Welcome back, Holly. Awesome. It's great to be back. I hope you've had a good week. Yes, I've had a great week. That's (laughs) awesome. All right. So, Holly, we're back for uh, to continue with the seven steps to reconciliation. And what I'd like you to do is if you would just restate steps one, two, and three, and then let's just dig right in, uh, starting with step four. Would that be all right? You got it. Okay, so uh, last week, Carolyn, we talked about the first three steps where number one for reconciliation is you want to make the first move. So I know a lot of people aren't going to like that, but you um, need to make the first move. And then number two is to ask God for wisdom. Um, He will give you that generously. And then number three is to begin with what is your fault in the situation, not, not what their fault is, even if it's 99.9% their Mm -hmm. fault. And and so far that's the hardest one. Yes. But but if you're doing step two and step one before that, it isn't quite as hard. Yes. As you're going. And and all of this gets easier. The more you get filled with the Holy spirit, the the more you're into the word and, and worshiping and praise and worship, the, 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 the easier this stuff becomes, right. honestly, because you're ple- you're you want to please God in this, and it's not yeah. just about rest- restoration with people. It's right, and, and, you, and yes, that and and if you receive love that He has for you, mm-hmm. you can. It's that reaping and sowing. Yes. You're going to give love. Yes, you're going to give forgiveness. Well. I, I can't wait to hear what's next. So. Well, number four is a big one. Okay. And we teach this in our restorative therapy course. And it is a huge chapter. And we call this the listen chapter. Mm-hmm. Because so many people don't listen mm-hmm. to anyone, to other people. And most people, the way they listen is when you're talking or I'm talking, they're already thinking about their next what they're going to say. Right. How they're um, going to respond. Yes. And not, not really what you're saying, but how they're yes. going to respond. And, and I'm here to tell you that out of all seven of these, this is probably the biggest key because okay. if you can't listen to other people and, and hear their hearts and how you've hurt them, then you can't resolve uh, mm. things with, with anyone. So uh, one of the things is, um, Watch for the emotions because there's always, like we were talking about, there's always uh, watch for the hurt because there's um, emotions behind the words of what people mm-hmm. say to you. Okay. And instead of trying, like I said, to, to get your next thought out um, and, and, it, and it be about the idea, it's not the idea. It's the emotion. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's that, interesting. Yes. It, it's really not about the idea it's a it's all about the emotion and where this took someone and you never know that um until you listen to them uh what's behind that emotion because the old saying is true hurt people hurt people yeah so i mean the more i hurt the more i would hurt you carolyn Mm -hmm. the more you have been hurt in your life the more you're capable you are of of hurting so kind of of like is if you stub your toe then you're going to yell at the dog Exactly. What did the dog do? Yeah. When it's that that pain just brings out something. Exactly. And emotional pain just Yeah. Absolutely. And you never know, Carolyn, when that is triggered in somebody Mm -hmm. because you don't know what they have been through. Mm, You don't know their past. You you start out judging them, but you don't know what abuse they've been through. You don't know what uh, rejection they've been through. You don't know what illness they've been through. We have no idea when we go to judge somebody. Mm -hmm. So, so the more that I hurt you, the more you will hurt. Now, the ones that need the love the most are are the ones that are hurting the most. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just a given. So, um, you know, for instance, like, like 
say my mom hurt me. Okay, but you have to go back to why did my mom hurt me? Like, what, how was my mom hurting? Because hurt people hurt people. Yes. How did, what did, what happened to my dad for my dad to hurt me? So it kind of gives you a third party of, of not taking it so personally. Ooh, that, and that would, makes okay. a huge difference when you're thinking about your relationship. Huge difference because you think somebody's personally trying to hurt you, but you're not seeing behind their eyes Mm. and how they got hurt. And and it could be nothing that has to do with you. And that totally changes your perspective. Totally changes your perspective. So, you know, when people aren't listened to, um, they feel devalued. Mm -hmm. They get mad. They feel devalued. It's funny because I tell people, again, I revert back to my counseling thing, but a good salesman, um, he never starts with his product. He starts with what is hurting on you or how, what are your needs? Right, exactly. If somebody tries to sell me a product and they don't know anything about me or what my needs are, how would, I'm, they're not going to relate to me. Right. So, um, you know, that's a reason God gave us two ears and one mouth, you know, so <laughs> we can listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, so always listen before speaking. Um, Philippians 2, 4, and 5 says that each of you should shift your needs to their needs. Look to their needs above your own. So you're most like Jesus when you're focused on the hurt of someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, this takes us back, Mm -hmm. Carolyn, to when Jesus was on the cross. He wasn't focused on the pain. He was focused Mm -hmm. on, Father, forgive them. You know, he he was focused on us Mm -hmm. above himself on the cross. That's a huge statement to us because he didn't cry out, Father, I'm in so much pain. Father, please get me out of this. He focused on our sins and us. And uh, that was such an incredible thing. But Mm -hmm. like what you said, try to see their perspective before you go to your perspective. So we're, we're so busy trying to get them to see our perspective that nothing gets resolved. Yeah. You know, I, I laugh a lot because um, I love Joyce Myers. And she says that, you know, her husband, Dave, she said she spent years praying that God would change him. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and she says it never happened. Hmm. And she says, you know, it's interesting because over the years, God changed her. But she said, I never prayed the prayer. God changed me. I always thought it was Dave's fault. You know, yeah. so and we get we, that way, don't we? We don't want to see. Oh, we don't want to see. Yeah. We want God to deal with the other person. Right. You know, God let the other person see how they've hurt us. Mm-hmm. You know, those are our prayers instead of being focused inwardly. You know, on God change my yes. heart towards that person. So, um, I think a good thing is to make a list too of harmful words and phrases okay. that that don't serve us, like. Um, I tell people in marriage counseling all the time that the word I want a divorce is off the table. Those are harmful phrases that should never be because you just need to shut the can lid on that. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. if, if you, if you get out of that situation, you, you're, you're not going to learn anything. Like you're going to go continually back into that. So harmful words of, you know, you're not good enough. You always, why do you never you never do. Why are we always going through this? You know, this is your fault. Those kinds of things will not get you any closer to conflict resolution. So that takes us to number five. And number five is basically to show gratitude and gratefulness. And this is one that I, I have to tell you, Carolyn has been my, one of my greatest changers Mm -hmm. in my life is when I finally decided to focus on the things that God has given me, not what God hasn't given me, um, to Ooh. be grateful for where yes. I am at any given time and to be grateful. Um, you know, I learned that watching my mother have four different descendants through her oh, breast cancer goodness. stages. And my mother was such a powerful woman of God. Um, she was a, a firm believer in declaring she, you know, the doctors would give her four months to live and she would just laugh it off. You know, she would be uh, like, that's just, if God, that's up to God, that's not up to them. And, and she just didn't let that take hold of her life. So mm. 
she was always grateful. She was always, I could walk in and she would have tubes, a shunt in her brain and tubes in her arms. And she would be smiling, laying there, being the most grateful person. And I know that's hard for a lot of people to comprehend, but she chose to live that way. And I believe that it made her live 25 years longer than she was supposed to live. So, you know, um, it's to me, when you got to this step, um, it's like, it seems out of place to me. What, but, but it's not hearing you explain it, but, but this can be kind of surprising. I think maybe to other people, since it it was surprising to me is why gratitude is part of a reconciliation process. Oh, gratitude is one of the biggest ones because when you start being grateful in your own life and you start um, just expressing that gratitude, everything in your life changes from your relationships to your bank account Mm -hmm. to your food pantry to to your the vacations you take i mean everything changes when you have an attitude of gratefulness and when you have that attitude you're approachable and so oh, i think yes. that it, yes. you know a lot of times when you're in conflict with people you you just have this air of just being non approachable because they're offended mm-hmm. and if you stay offended that offense offense And offendedness is the opposite of gratitude and gratefulness. Oh, well, I can see that. I can see where that's true. Because if you're grateful, you're not going to be prideful either. Exactly. Exactly. Gratefulness takes the place of that pridefulness, that ego, that, that offense. And God knows, Carolyn, everybody in this world today is offended. We're offended. (laughs) I I mean, you can't say anything. I can't even go down the offense road, right? Right. (laughs) But Romans 15, 2 says to us that we must be considerate of the doubts and fears of others. So let's please um, the other fellow not ourselves Mm -hmm. and do what is for his good and thus build him up in the Lord. So if we try to look like what I was telling you, if we try to look in their lives instead of being judgmental, then you can understand why perhaps they're where they are Mm -hmm. with their doubts and fears. So that goes back to, you know, the doubts and fears of being, you know, that, that rejection or, or if I go to this person, they may reject me. You know, Mm -hmm. they may, that's not the point. And that is a hard one to swallow because you want to be right with the father. And that comes back to you want your prayers heard. You want to be in right standing with him. You want to be in fellowship and communion with him, whether they accept anything or not. That's Mm -hmm. not up to you. That's up to, to the Lord. That's such a great point and I absolutely love hearing that verse when you're talking about reconciliation because mm-hmm. you know even if okay let's just say this even if you don't really like that person and mm-hmm. you've never really quite got along with that person you can mm-hmm. still reconcile on things you can still restore the relationship and with that mm-hmm. verse you still need to treat them the way God wants you to treat them absolutely it says be considerate yes. of the doubts and fears of others yes and Carolyn, we don't always know what their doubts and fears are, you know, because we, we, we just don't know. We're Again, we're incompatible. We're all different, you know. <laughs> so um, I think it's very important, you know, that's putting the other person first. So that's where gratitude and gratefulness come into this equation. Okay. And then this takes us to number six, and that is to fix the problem and not the blame. So, in other words, learn to attack the issue, okay. not each other. That, and that sometimes we get those things mixed up, don't we? We get those things mixed up because you, you're you're thinking that you're not on the same team, and we are all on the same team. So, especially believers. Absolutely. You know, especially well, especially husband and wives. Oh yes, husbands and wives have to be. On you the know. Same team. Yeah. And parents and children, when you when you look at the dynamics of just the relationships, you're all on the same team. True. But how many times, mm-hmm. you know, do husbands and wives just attack? It's just like this, you know, but also, you know, look at Washington. I mean, the president blames the Congress and the Congress yeah. blames the president. Yeah. So what happens? Nothing gets done. So we're in a standstill. So as long as you're attacking each other, you're not solving anything. Right. 
So, um, mm. Colossians 3, 8, 2, and I think this is, um, this is such a good one too. It says, um, that you must rid yourself of all such things as these anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Wow. So when you're blaming others, you know, that's all of this is coming out, mm -hmm. you know, so stop the anger. I mean, don't, don't intimidate, bring on intimidation. Don't say things to intentionally hurt the other one. Um, you know, I mean, a good example of this is, you know, you're just like your mother. Mm -hmm. You'll always be like your mother, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, I don't know why you did that. You know, you don't, you don't know your own. So let, I mean, in other words, you know, it, it says, I know why you did that. No, you don't know why I did that. Right. You right. know, you don't know why I reacted the way I, I would react. So stop belittling. Um, this is a, this is a vicious, vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's one that will never bring you reconciliation in your marriage with your children, um, in, in, uh, the politics and mm -hmm. in life in general is to, um, you know, uh, Colossians three, eight says, you know, get rid of it, get rid of these things. Mm -hmm. These are, these are slander, filthy language. No, it's not, that's God's, that's not appropriate. Right. right. And so then mm -hmm. that brings us to, to number seven. And okay. then th this might be a kicker for some people, but it's focus on reconciliation and not resolution. And I'll tell you the difference yes. in these two, yeah. okay? The difference is, is reconciliation means reestablishing the relationship. In oh, other, okay. In other words, it doesn't necessarily mean you get back with an ex. It doesn't mean you go back to an unhealthy situation. But it means that you're at peace with each other. You're burying the hatchet. So, so to say. So maybe okay? that's an agree to disagree kind of thing. Yep. And that's, we're going to get to that because okay. resolution means we resolve every disagreement. Oh, right. So, and so this is not. never going to happen yeah. because we're all different. Okay. So you can disagree without being disagreeable. Okay. So you don't, in other words, Carolyn, it, you don't have to see eye to eye. Right. But so, so to recap that re reconciliation means reestablishing the relationship, but resolution means we resolve every disagreement, which is not. Mm -hmm. So we're going to focus on the reconciliation, not resolution. So in other words, don't go into something thinking the other person is just going to make everything right. Because at the end of the day, I mean, not everything's going to be right. That's that to me is something that you need to start off in the very beginning with that mindset that I'm not in this to make sure that they agree with me. When I'm not in this. it to win it. Yeah. <laughs> that Just was the sermon about this last Sunday for my pastor. <laughs> I'm not in it to win it because this isn't a win. You mm -hmm. know, this is, if you're, if you're not, uh, you know, reestablishing relationships, you're in a loss. Yeah. You're in a loss with your relationship with the father, you know, because he loves his children and he wants mm -hmm. us to get along. So, mm -hmm. you know, and Carolyn, our world is full of conflicts. We're full of war, division, arguments, stress, clashes, you know, because um, of that, we have broken marriages, families, we have broken hearts all over the place. Mm -hmm. But I think the challenge that I would love to put out to your incredible listeners is this, is that they would commit to being a bridge builder. Ooh, yes, okay? They that. would promote reconciliation. Yes. Um, you know, we're here for a ministry. Every one of us are and our mm -hmm. minister. Our ministry is to restore relationships. If you're a child of God, mm -hmm. that's it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't hold people's faults against them. You know, we're Christ's witnesses. Yes. So he's paid for all of our sins. So be at peace with God, then spread that peace. Um, and I love the the verse, the Second Corinthians 5, 18 through mm -hmm. 20. It says, God bless those who are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. And I think that is so very important. And I, I feel that there's one sentence um, that can break up any log jam. Okay. What is one it? sentence. Are you ready? Yes. I'm sorry. 
I was only thinking of myself. That would also be shocking for many people if they heard you say it. (laughs) Because we don't say that very often, do we? We don't say that very often. And that is the one sentence that if you are in conflict with someone else and you don't know what to do and you don't know what to say, start by saying, I'm sorry, I was only thinking of myself. And then you watch them pick their jaw up off the floor. And because then, we're in a society of that's not the way I feel. That's not the way I think. Right. You shouldn't treat me that way. Right. You shouldn't talk to me that way. Everybody's offended with everything. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that, so it, that's really, it's really powerful and an example to set that you can acknowledge that you, you have a, a part in whatever the disagreement may be. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and that's even like going back to number, you know, four, like even if you think, cause there's been times, Carolyn, I've thought, you know, <laughs> that's your fault. Mm-hmm. You know, 99.9%, mm-hmm. it could be their fault, right. but that is not the point. Right. Exactly. The, now, yeah. Holly, um, our, we're starting to run out of time and this has been fabulous. I'm going to have lots of notes in, on my website for the podcast, in the podcast notes and such, with the seven steps and some of the other things that you've shared because they're awesome. so insightful. And that was it. That took us to everything. Yes. I just had a little prayer at the end if you, for everyone if you oh, wanted me to do that. I, but would, if- I would love to have you do that. But, but, before, but before you do the prayer, can you tell us about your ministry? Just a real quick snapshot of, of the ministry sure. that you have. Sure. Well, so I became the CEO of FBCTI three years ago, and that is Faith-Based Counselor Training Institute. Uh, my father has ran this for, uh, yeah, since 1997. Wow. Um, he mm. was head of the House bill with President Bush, um, oh. and um, they correlated the House bill, uh, I believe it's 2041. Um, don't quote me on that. That is on our website, though, um, okay. FBCTI.org. And it allowed the faith-based community to come forward and mm-hmm. actually counsel That's and hang their shingle, mm-hmm. um, just like a, a licensed therapist would do. Yeah. And so we're super grateful for that. And this ministry has trained over 21,000 people worldwide in China and Russia and Hong Kong mm-hmm. over the years. Uh, we've, we have 21,000 um, crisis chaplains and restorative therapists. We uh, offer that course online to people uh, in the privacy of their own home. We go to churches where churches set up crisis teams Mm. and they can have Mm. five to seven people um, take the course. And it really teaches you how to counsel the hurting. So Mm. if you have a desire to help hurting people and you have a passion for that, these courses and you just didn't know where, how to get there or how to do it. We teach you how to set up a practice. We teach you the ethics, the logistics of it. We teach you um, everything that there is about counseling the hurting. And that's inmates, uh, uh, marriage, uh, chemical dependency, anger management. We go through all of that. So um, we would, yeah, that's, that's our, our deal in our heart, and we are actually, my husband and I just bought an RV, and we're fixing to wrap it for FBCTI, and we've been asked oh. to speak at several churches, Great. and so we're going to be touring the U.S. Um, with FBCTI, so yeah, we just encourage you guys to, if you have a dream and you don't want to go back to school, to get educated, we'll be every step of the way with your journey. We have a ton of affiliates. And, uh, yeah, go to the website. Yes. We have everybody from Mike Huckabee to James Robinson wow. on there endorsing the school. And um, it's just a, it's just become my passion these three years. I may have been a home builder for years, but I've always been a builder of the kingdom. And yeah. that's my passion today. And, and so. it's, uh, it's obvious from the way you've shared. So I um, thank you. Why don't you thank you again so much. Why don't you close us in prayer, Holly? Sure. So, Father, so, Father, you know we're all scared to death of conflict, and yet you have said it is more important than worship. And, Lord, we know you are not saying go back and remarry an ex, but to bring harmony, to bury the hatch, bring peace to the situation. And I pray you would give the people listening today the courage and strength to reconcile relationships that have been broken, God, and that have been kept 
um, that have been kept you out out of relationships, Lord, with people that that have not been in right standing with you, God, because of broken relationships. And Lord, help us to face what we have put off and to have integrity. And God, give us the right time, the right place, and the right thing to say that I come with the right attitude to reconcile this relationship. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Holly. Thank you for joining me today. I hope the information provided has been helpful and encouraging and can equip you to have a better understanding of the connection between mental health and faith. I am always open to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please send me an email at carolyn at ingodscorner.org, and I would love to hear from you. Thank you, and may God bless your journey.